here's my theory on DeAndre Hunter. He has the talent defensively to guard threes and fours and be a pretty good defender. He can switch some stuff with ones and twos and should be solid on the defensive end. Where I don't really see a position for him is offensively. I think he's a classic tweener, stuck between that 3-4 spot. I don't think he has the ball handling ability and the playmaking ability and the athleticism to really handle the ball on the perimeter like a 3. I can see him playing some small ball 4, but I don't think he's going to be super effective in that position. Let's take a look at the full scouting report. This video is going to be kind of an emphasis again on his flaws, what I don't see in his game. Obviously, he does some things well. I'm going to do a little write-up on Twitter, at Scout with Brian. Make sure you follow on there so you can see the full details. And again, make sure you check out already the videos I've done on Za, uh, excuse me, Cyan, Ja, RJ, and Jared Culver. This is the DeAndre Hunter Scout, and let's delve into again the few things I see wrong with his game. First of all, when it comes to threes, yes, he shot him okay for the season, but he shot very low volume. And I saw a lot of inconsistency in his shot. You see a lot of his misses just be nowhere close. And in addition, he's just got kind of a loading shot. It takes a while for him to get off. And while the form looks okay, he's a lot of times short, a lot of times long, a lot of times sideways. Mechanically, again, up top it looks all right for the most part. But down low, I like to look again. I've talked about the feet straight up, straight down. I know there's instances where you want to sway and instances where you use different footwork, but on a traditional spot-up shot like this, I think you should have 10 toes to the rim, feet even with each other, perfectly square, and DeAndre Hunter often, you'll see his right leg coming forward as he kind of has a little bit of a tilt, a little bit of a turn or a twist in his shot. You see his body kind of move a little bit to his right on a lot of his spot-up opportunities. I just don't really see a really fluid jumper. You see that right foot sticking up again as that shot goes left and short, I just feel like, again, most good shooters, their power really comes from their core. They're down and ready and low when they catch the ball. He has a tendency to be pretty upright. And you see, again, on the form, looks all right mechanically, again, aside from the foot and the result. There's a lot of general inconsistency with the shot, and I feel like that's why he was a very low-volume three-point shooter. Just not super comfortable out there. He's much more comfortable to me getting around the elbows, going to his one or two dribble pull-up. And again, the shot, you see that right foot forward again, and a little bit of that twist. You see him again kind of turn while he's in the air. It's hard to show exactly, but a lot of the shots just have that inconsistency to them. I think part of the reason, I think, again, this is where he's most comfortable. He wants to really be able to catch the ball back to the basket, eventually face you up, go at you in the post, kind of get to these fadeaway type shots, which as a 6'7", kind of undersized four-man, you know, I think he's more like a guy like early career Jeff Green, early career Marvin Williams, who's not going to translate great. Nobody's posting up a 6'7", four-man all that often in the NBA. I don't think, again, he has the ball skills really to play against a lot of threes in NBA defense, and not many coaches are going to want to run their offense through him down there. As I mentioned... Where he is much more comfortable, for whatever reason, is getting to that one or two dribble pull-up. And when he can't get there, when he does have to put the ball down and go to the basket, that's where I see a lot of discomfort out of him. I see a pretty weak handle that can't really get through the tight gaps, often gets stripped on the way there, and really can't handle the ball through a crowd. He's pretty right-hand dominant. When he does go left, he tends to leave the ball exposed, have it knocked off him, and just generally doesn't have the tight handle. You see on a situation like this, I'd love to see him put the ball down right and then quick cross back to his left and get to the basket to attack that defender's front foot. Instead, he ends up letting the defense catch up, getting kind of stuck under the basket and going back to that fadeaway, which is a low percentage shot in the NBA. You see again, I just feel like his command of the ball, his handle, you see every time he catches the ball on the perimeter, very rarely is he trying to put the ball down two, three, four dribbles to get to the basket. And when he does put the ball down for multiple dribbles, he ends up sometimes thinking a little bit too fast, losing control of the ball. I don't really see a great command of the basketball. You see him again get kind of trapped into a crowd here. He's a below-the-rim athlete for the most part, and when he gets stuck in the air like this, it does end up leading to a decent amount of turnovers. 
Here you see him again getting to his face up, that kind of jab step. He does, again, have good footwork there. And I think I'm impressed with the fundamental technique. This part of his game is kind of the retro, old-fashioned, Paul Pierce-type post-ups. But you see, again, when he faces pressure and spins into a crowd, he has a lot of trouble handling the ball. And again, I'm the world's biggest defender of the mid-range, but I just don't see him shooting the shot at a high enough clip to really justify a guy like him being able to take a ton of them at the next level. I see, for the most part, again, a guy who just is not comfortable with his own ball skills right now to even attack a slower big, to put the ball down, go at him towards the rim and try to get into the paint. That's what I think Jared Culver, R.J. Barrett even do a pretty good job at. DeAndre Hunter has a tendency, once again, to settle for a lot of these one-bounce pull-ups with his right foot ahead, and the result, again, is wildly inconsistent to me. Once again, I feel like even here is a great example. He had his defender beat. Good right jab. Has this gap right now to his left hand, his weaker hand. I think he's most players, most good NBA players are able to take this all the way to the rim and at least get fouled. To me, he's not as comfortable going all the way. So he jabs, one more dribble, ends up pulling up. Again, it's an okay shot. It's not the worst shot in the world. But with the analytics in the NBA, most teams aren't going to be very happy with him taking a huge volume of these shots unless you shoot him like Kobe Bryant. You see even again here, why only one dribble? Why isn't he more comfortable? You see coming off this pin down, he has his man trailing right here. So the read on this, to me, is put the ball down to your left hand, get in this gap right here, right here, and take it to the basket, force this defender to step up, create the dump off to the big, Instead, he just puts it down for that simple one dribble, almost foot on the line, contested two. Not a good shot, in my opinion. And again, he can make them, there's no question. You see here, hard left pound. He shoots it pretty well. I, I will give him credit. I know I've shown a lot of misses in this video, but he does have good technique. He does read coming off screens well, as anybody in Tony Bennett's system does. But again, he played mostly four in this system. He didn't play a tremendous amount of three. He usually was one of the big men screening in this action, like here or like here, who's sending screens for the guards to come off all day. He doesn't have a tremendous amount of experience coming off these type of screens himself, reading it as a guard, being a guy who can come off pin down actions in the NBA. Again. People talked about, and I talked about even in my Culver video, did he outplay him in the championship game? Absolutely. But do you know how many times Damian Lillard has outplayed in a single game Steph Curry in the NBA? Do you know how many people take that to mean that Damian Lillard's better than Steph Curry? It's a small sample size. A lot of his shots were tough. And you see again, the tough one dribble pull up out of the face up. Where again, he has good footwork, but once again on his shot, I see uneven feet a whole lot. And again, inconsistency with the shot. Then I do, again, have some questions just about his athleticism in general. Like I said, I do see a below-the-rim athlete. I don't see an explosive finisher like Culver, like Barrett. I see a guy who, even here, for example, should be able to leap and finish this strong with the dunk, uncontested, ends up going up right hand, his strong hand, on the left side of the rim. I see a guy who is mostly a two-foot jumper, so in situations like this, once again, isn't comfortable taking multiple dribbles, probing underneath, only puts it down once to jump off two feet for a tough, long floater. And again, when he does get to the rim even, I see a guy who does shy away from contact a little bit, who's not an ex explosive finisher through the contact. He does, again, have good full work on the outside. He's a well-developed player, a smart player, but he gets by his man here. And to me, this should be a rim-rattling dunk. You see him jump, ends up jumping off that right foot awkwardly, gets stuck in the air, doesn't finish with authority. And then once again here, maybe a little contact, but I don't even know exactly what happened here. This should be, again, shot fake put the ball down, and again, attack the rim with authority, dunk this ball. He gets bumped off his path often, whether it be even from a little contact like this. You've got to find a way in the NBA 
to be an explosive athlete, to finish strong through the contact. You see him kind of flailing, falling away. Not at all that explosive of a finisher to me. Again, you see him playing the face up, post up. I think that's what he prefers to do. But again here, end up getting blocked at the rim. When I feel like this should have been a hard rip through like he did. One dribble, jump off that left foot and dunk it instead. You see he kind of has to gather, go off two feet. One, two, ends up getting blocked right at the rim. Thanks for watching my DeAndre Hunter scouting report. Like I said, on Twitter, at Scout with Brian. I'll drop some more details. And again, this was mostly meant to show the flaws in his game. That's not to say he shouldn't still be a first-round pick, a top 15-ish pick, perhaps. But I'm not a huge fan of his game. I'll go into more detail why there. Please make sure you thumb up. Please make sure hit that subscribe button. And if you've really liked these draft videos in particular, your support on Patreon, which I'll put right about here, would be really, really appreciated. You can support even $2 a month makes a huge difference and keeps me going. And I'll get to getting a new microphone, as I know a lot of you have mentioned. That's one of the first things I'll take care of once I get a little support on Patreon. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks again. Leave me a comment. Appreciate it.